Hello, hello, all my uh, socially distant subscribers. Uh, hello once again. It's uh, hi, Marco here, and uh, with Mind's Eye Visual Guitar Methods. And I wanted to redo the video I did uh, just the other day, sitting in my van, all excited because I saw a video on alternate tunings by Paul Davids, specifically tuning in fifths instead of fourths. And I wanted to make a uh, response video, and I did, and it was a little bit. Um, uh, raw, so uh, un unpolished, so I thought I would make this one, and so here we go. It's still a little bit on the live side, it won't be edited, um, since I don't really have a whole lot of time to do that today, but I did have time to re-record it in my studio, which I happen to be home for, for the weekend, so lucky for that. So, uh, here we go, and so it's about tuning in fourths versus tuning in fifths, and I'll write a little note down here that when the guitar is tuned normally it will go you go up in fourths and you go down in fifths and so for example if i go straight up let's take uh, the fifth fret here and go straight up a line here uh, an a to a d is a four d to g is four g to c four the c to e however is a flat third, the C to F is the fourth, and then the E to the A is back to a fourth. So, um, going down, however, you're moving in fifth, so an A to an E, or perhaps a C to a G. That would be like being uh, here on your third fret. And playing your powered chord note, one string below, and up on the fifth fret, C, G, fifth. Now, however, you're moving up in notes, so it's not technically in a, like exactly like a fifth, but that's a little deeper. Uh, into explaining that we're just going to kind of brush off over today. Um, you can think of it as like a fifth. So what that, what it really, why I would bring that up um, in this lesson is to suggest that if we're tuning in fifths, then really what we're doing is reversing this pattern on the guitar fretboard. Let's talk about this pattern really quick to get everyone up to speed who's just tuning into this channel for the very first time. Um, my particular method or understanding of the fretboard, what makes it easy for me to get around all the shapes stuff all over the fretboard is to understand how these um, basically a block of notes that makes this easy to play pattern right here um, and a little tired sounding uh, but usable nonetheless uh, pattern is easily findable uh, that makes like a navigation square that's uh, repeatable in two different rows. This row is basically, it's about, if you analyze this, it's about string groupings. It's where the square lies. This is on the in-between strings, so the um, fifth and fourth and third and second string, and then the, uh, the third box is broken up at, um, at this end, and we call the BC the top and the EF the bottom, so. The top is here, bottom is here, and so it gets easier in the second row where it's grouped on strings 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5 and 6, if you want to just call the strings 1 through 6 that way. Okay, so you can see there's two rows, and it repeats. You can see the repeat beginning right here. Here's the EF here, so it stands to reason that connected right from that fret to that fret. In the tritone row, BF, notice in this, this will come up later. B, F, B, F, B, F, B. A uh, little bit of a jump there for, since 
the interval between these strings is a uh, not a perfect fourth. It's a what uh, major third. So we'll write that down here that we got a fourth, a fourth, a fourth, a third, and a fourth. Just so you know, that's the interval that you're jumping there straight straight down. So um, that creates that little broken box in case that didn't look like a box to you right there. But there's once again is B C E F, and we use the we call this the B C E F box because um, we, we're using the C major scale, which makes it easy with all the whole notes. If you move this shape up and down the fretboard, you're moving the major scale and uh, the notes inside change, but the pattern stays the same. To get the other notes, that's only four notes of a seven note scale. To get the other ones, you put them in front or behind, like as I noted here. You can think of it as add a dog, A, D, D, G. And notice that there's the repeat D in D that'll come up again in the uh, second part of this video. So, um, Kind of neat there in uh, all of these uh, eight notes. You got seven notes of the scale with one repeat. The two, in this case, the D note is there and there. Okay, so that's kind of how the basic visualization, the visual pattern of the fretboard works, especially with the navigation box. Um, and there's the, uh, as I always say in my videos when I explain this, the as is above, so is below technique. If you were ever tooling around in this box saying, okay, um, you know, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Gee, I, I want to go to that next area. Which fret is it? Especially if you got a f something like this without the dots. Although, although the dots are on the top. But anyways, um, as is above, so is below. So if you reach the bottom two notes, let's say in this case we're in... Uh, Fret seven and eight, up at the top. And I made it all the way to here, and I could go back to the top. And I'm back at this pattern. And it repeats all the way up the fretboard. Sorry for having that a little bit out of the camera. So, um, as is above, so is below is a neat way to remember that. And you can see that even right here, there's the B, C, E, F square at the bottom, which is just basically the bottom of this pattern. It's just that, 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 it repeats. That's why the rest of this is blank. It's just a repeat of this. Okay, we're up to speed. So um, we want to think about this new altered tuning. What if we tuned in fifths? And because if we started with our E, that would make the bottom strings just impossibly tuned impossibly high. We do that by lowering the top string. So I've tuned a guitar to that tuning, which we'll uh, experiment with in a little bit. But until that time, let's uh, visualize it. So let's take our final notes here. So our, our Basically, our pattern goes from a left to right in an angle, and it includes one row that breaks up the uh, squares, um, but they're always on string groupings, but you have the middle two, the middle four strings for your solid box, and then your outside string, or you have three boxes evenly spaced on the one, two, the three, four, and the five, and six. Okay, so we've taken note of that. Let's pick up our pick that we dropped. Boy, that was a stretch. Okay. And let's go to the... Oh, it's not complete. Whoa. Yeah, I did that on purpose. Because I wanted to show you guys how to build the... Um, how to build it from scratch. So here we go. We've got the uh, makings of the new tuning. Tuned in fifths. So this is fifths going this way. And stands to reason that fourths would be going that way. But we won't think about that since they're not going from low to high. They'd be going from high to low. Anyways, so from low to high, we're in fifths. And instead of low to high, fourths. So as I've written down the interval spacings here. And to notice that uh, the top string, as also described in Paul's video, is only turned to a flat third because any other uh, that you're getting, you're twisting these strings really high by then. I was kind of worried tuning my my guitar to this tuning uh, once I got to these strings, but it, it did work out. Anyways, so um, if you want to fill this out really fast, first of all, making a fretboard, I always fill in the dots first. You skip two, and you, then you do four, 
that skip a dot. Then you skip two, skip a string to make your 12th fret dots, and then you skip two again, just like in the beginning here, and you make four more. And you do that for 24 frets. You can do that one more time, and you've got the back wall, the end of your fretboard. And that should match up, up and down, using your stratorious edge. There you go. And here we go. There we go. We got our easy peasy, somewhat sloppy fretboard laid out. It should be correct. Okay. So to get up the fill it out really quick, and especially with when it's new and you don't know exactly where all the squares or where any of the notes are gonna line up, go string by string. So C D E F G a B C so we've gotten to the 12th fret and we'll just stop at the 12th fret today um, and it's easy because we know that you know uh, B C is always together then there's just D E oh but once we're in E we're basically um, for all the newbies B C and E F are the um, notes with no notes in between no black key in between them so we'll just consider those together so we end up at the G and look at that when we write in this way we keep on ending up on the 12th fret exactly where we were before let's get zero for the open strings one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve do 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 sesame street remember that okay anyways D a, B, C, D, E, F, G, A is our basically our double. Then we'll have a B, C. Then we only got one note, which is D, but we're at the octave. Let's start again. A, we got B, C. I see something forming here. B, C, E, F square. But look at that. Instead of the B, C on top now, the B, C is on the bottom. Makes sense that we've flipped our tuning completely in reverse. So a B, C, then we've got E, e oh, sorry, <laughs> B, A, B, C, E, G, K, X. Okay, B, C, D, then E, F, and you've got G, A. All right, so we've got E, F. In between the F, we've got the G, A, the double, and then we've got our together notes, B, C, and look at how they lined up again. So we've only got the D, then you'd have the E, F, and we're going to do that one there since they're together. Okay, on the G, we've got the A, B. Oops, we're on B, so that's B, C, D, then E, F, and G. So you can see by going up the strings that way, you can fill your notes suddenly out really fast. You've got your whole, you got the whole world in your hands. So you've got everything filled out. Now let's find our squares and let's circle all our half step and see if they end up in squares. And look at that. There's a half step square. And it's also B, C, E, F. Well, those are the half steps, so that's actually going to happen. Now here we've got an E, F, but we don't have a B, C around, so... We'll take note of that later. We've got a BC here. It looks like as is above, so is below is working, but it's not technically the same since the strings are no longer like in the E tuning, E standard. Those are both E. Here it's C and G. Okay, so we've got, let's look for our other. Here we've got a B, C, E, F. Now this is weird. It, ma it makes it that string set no longer has a uh, a weird jog to worry about and where else do we get one? Oh, i see a b c e f right here all right so now we got an e f here and an e f there All right, so as you can see, there are some similarities, and there's some differences, and all the similarities are the same, yet completely reversed. So what we're looking at here is 
um, not only is everything going this way, where on our other tuning, everything went this way from left to right, bottom to top. Here from bottom to top, it goes right to left. Interesting. So you would theoretically have, um, let's start at the second fret and play our typical square box shape there. Oh, <laughs> aha, I'm on the wrong guitar. <laughs> I got to plug in my other guitar that's tuned to this uh, and see what we got. So there goes my pick again. Uh, let's get a lower oh, pick. Let's not put you where you fall. Okay, so my uh, interesting kind of new pick there. I'm not so sure that they're the best thing ever, but they're pretty cool. Okay, so we've got... Let's hear how this sounds on that other guitar I've tuned. Let's take a look. Basically, what I'm showing you is that uh, like one resource, a valuable resource to this method. When you've tuned your guitar to that new tuning, you basically lose everything you know about where the notes are, especially if you've started to memorize some of these notes. So you want to finger some chords. You Maybe you want to... Uh, G chord, um, you want to spell out, let's see, it would be G, oh, that, that pencil died, G, B, D, F, let's say you wanted a G, B, D, F, a G7 chord, where, where could you really find that? You could go, uh, say, uh, well, there's your low G, we would need a B next. We would find that, or we could uh, mix them up to create a, uh, they don't have to be in the same order. So G, D, B, and then our F could be way up there, or we got a D down there, so G, F, B, D. So let's, uh, let's try that out. for a pop. And some crackle. And a little snap. Part of this complete breakfast. So let's take away the uh, distortion there and get clean. We're going to be clean. Here it is, if it's still holding a tune. Something's off. Tune it from the 5th fret, or from the 7th fret. And then you turn this bottom one, the bottom string, sorry for being off camera here, from the, as you can see the nut there, the third fret. All right, should have something sounding okay. That's how he's got. That's how it sounds. If you finger a regular old chord, oh, is it gonna sound bad? <laughs> but you can try all new shapes. So let's try that G chord. We were we want G B D F. There's a couple ways we can get this. Let's try to start with our. Uh, well, we got an open G there. We could do. 
that would make finding BDNF a lot easier. So if we got, we could go BF, BD, like with an F chord shape. What's, what uh, fret is that? Fret seven. I don't know all about that, but I don't know if we got that right either. D, B, F, B, right? B, F, B, D. Yep, there's our octave, backwards octave. So, you know, like the cool thing about uh, altered tuning is like, you know, right there, you just, if you find something, it sounds totally different and it's, it's quick to get musical with it because you're, you're finding something new. And that's the key of G. F sharp, G, 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 A, B, C, D, E. You can even let the A ring out in there because that's in the key. That sounds kind of cool. Letting the fifth string and the E string ring out since they're both on the both G's. And when you get to that one, you can let the lower string ring out because you're on the C. I'm uh, a little wrong there. That's I'm up to the D, D, E. There's the C. You can let it ring out on both the C. You want to try to mute it there. Okay, anyways, I'm getting way out of hand here. The uh, Back to the lesson. <laughs> um, so you can see that the squares are not only uh, upside down, but they're reversed in every way. And we had mentioned the B, uh, F, B, um, our tritone row is going exactly the other way. Or something went wrong there, hold on. So, for example, if we start on the C, or the B, right? B, F, B, F, B. And then we'd go up here. It's a little different on the bottom string. So you got to go up two frets which is one fret down from where you started. So for example, we started on the 11th fret of the low C string. We end up on the 10th fret of the high G string. Okay, and other concepts uh, we mentioned that were the um, back to the original scale how the 
after the square, the double note is the D, and it's going in this direction. We'll check it out. Once again, the double note is the D, it's the 2, however, it's on the opposite side, going the other direction. How about that? And so, to add in your other notes, you would add a dog. Here you can, um, I don't know, disassociate a god? <laughs> I don't know. Um, so... All right, so let's experiment here. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna to try to play this uh, this D E F A B C box. A B C D E F. fingerings here so here's something that's EC and EC with a low C ringing out and a high G oh, that didn't sound good but That's waiting for another chord. Maybe something. That was the um, basically fifth and seventh fret, and I wouldn't have any idea what that is. But uh, you go to this chart, and I was like, okay, I was low noting in the bass a G and an F, and just ringing out the the open, so F D A E G. I can see how the F there was probably a little clash with that E. <laughs> But it, so far apart, it does it loses its dissonance to my ear. And it actually adds the, a dissonance that pulls you back to the resolution of the G and the high G with the D, A, and E. See an A to a G, there's a 2, or maybe a, a ninth. you can think of that. The G, the D is making it happy as a major third. And you're instantly going to be playing things that you don't normally play. On a regular guitar. So it's going to make things sound suddenly fresh and very appealing. 
Um, and this will help if you have multiple guitars. You can take one that uh, maybe in standard tuning you don't really like how it sounds, and sometimes it can really wake the guitar up to um, do it in a in a different tuning. I'd recommend something with a hardtail. Here I've got a whammy. There's a D chord shape, it's got a weird sound. Oh, C shape is horrible. Let's try a reverse chord. Finger rings are going to get a little bit obtuse. Maybe say you like that. Ooh, I like that. Was that okay? Then we can figure it out with our chart here. We uh, got an open G is ringing. We've got a fifth fret on the third string, so that is a, another G. Then we've got an E flat, a B flat, or a D sharp, A flat. And what do we got there? We have an Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, we've got a seven fret. We've got a D. So there's a little bit of a clash there, I believe. But either way, you're going to come up with things. And you can Figure them out here and find out what the intervals are uh, with everything else. And so I think that brings me about to a close here. Uh, do we get as is above, so is below? We get that from here to here so you can find, you know, where you are. Um, but you don't get that. I guess so, for example... <laughs> I'm still on scale. right Eventually get to navigate it and especially if you uh, maybe you can learn your navigation squares and how they work in a different order okay I'm gonna leave you with that and hope you found this interesting and maybe a little better put together than the last version of the video I did and um, we'll see you all next time probably next time that I'm home which is gonna be weeks from now so just to give you a heads up you'll probably not find any majorly new uh, videos on this channel anytime soon so i thank you for watching uh, have a great day here's me hi and um we'll talk to you soon uh, leave me a question leave me a comment below tell me uh what you think about the videos the the channel everything like that like subscribe hit the notifications button and we'll see you soon thank you for watching have a great day thank you Okay, once again, this is how you hit stop.